What's going on guys, unknown player here and today we're going to be talking some more about Destiny 2 and a variety of topics like the vehicles we know of so far and what they do, some cool things we can spot about the social space and also talking about what the Cabal are actually doing on our sun which is actually super interesting. So firstly let's look at the vehicles in Destiny 2, we've seen quite a lot of them so far, some aren't that exciting like sparrows and pikes but some like the tanks are actually really cool looking. So there are two types that we caught glimpses of, one of them is like a normal tank with this huge cannon as you can see, and these aren't just AI tanks that roam around by themselves, you actually get in them and drive them around which is really cool. You can imagine this can probably take quite a bit of damage, and also of course you're hidden so you can't be shot out of it easily, they have to destroy the tank itself. Now this second tank is what really looks interesting to me, and this one doesn't even seem like it has weapons, it seems like it's just a battering ram or like a plow and its purpose is to literally run stuff over and trample stuff which is pretty funny. You can see this one on the planet Titan or the moon Titan mowing over a bunch of poor hive and smashing their runes apart, but it kind of splits up the gameplay, makes things a bit more interesting, not just shooting stuff but now you're in a giant tractor thing just running over hive, breaking all their stuff. And I'm really glad to see vehicles actually getting fleshed out properly in multiple different types, not just little sparrows or little pikes. But they just weren't that memorable, to be honest. The only times vehicles appear is just like a pike on the side as an option when you go from A to B. So they weren't really a part of the gameplay, but now it looks like tanks are actually quite important for once. But it seems like whether this is like a mission or patrol, it seems like this tractor is the best option. And I'm also hoping there's at least like one crucible map with these tanks in so you can mess around with them. A bit similar to so combined arms in PvP. So hopefully these tanks make an appearance in the crucible but yeah it seems like these tanks are actually going to be a pretty big part of the gameplay and definitely excited to top in them. Now you can also see the interceptor being driven by a scion. Don't think they could do that in Destiny 1. I think it was a normal cabal that could drive the interceptors but now scions can drive apparently so I'm sure we'll be able to drive them too. There is also a dreg riding a pike so those things are returning and of course obviously we have the sparrows which are coming back as well. Nothing massively different about those. Looks slightly different but of course they'll probably behave in the same way. So next up, let's talk about the social space, or as its actual name is so far, what Bungie are calling it, the farm. Not really a massive fan of that name personally, it sounds a bit random, but the farm is apparently the new tower. It's also called the Guardian Camp in the Director. Now this is the only social space we're getting in Destiny 2, at least to start off with, before the DLCs. But Luke Smith said in multiple interviews they want to try and limit these social spaces and not have you going around like 10 different planets all trying to get different bounties and pick up quests from different characters. They want to try and limit it which definitely makes sense. It did get quite boring having to go to the reef to get a trials card and then go to the Iron Temple to have to get your Iron Banner stuff and then go back to the tower because you forgot a Shaq's bounty. So it's nice to have it all in one place and at least for the launch of Destiny 2 that's how it's going to remain. But Luke Smith did kind of hint there will be more social spaces as the game progresses and as more expansions launch. But for now, they just want to keep it as this one place, it being at the farm, of course. So by far one of my favourite things about this farm is simply the fact they turned that little ball easter egg into a real game with scores now. And you can properly play football. Your real goals there, when the ball goes through them, the fireworks or flares go off. And it's basically a perfect example of Bungie taking small easter eggs that we love and spent way too much time kicking around in the tower. And now it's an actual game. I can definitely imagine people doing 1v1s and 6v6s and actual games of football going on in this farm. So I think it's really funny and definitely one of my favourite things about this social space. Now without a doubt one of the biggest questions for Destiny 2 even before it was revealed is is the Cryptarch going to live? Is he going to survive the tower and are we going to be seeing a good old Master Hall back in this new Guardian camp? Now in the back of this shot you can see where the Cryptarch is actually located. You can't make out who the figure is, whether it is Master Hall, whether he survived or not. But I'm kind of hoping he does make a return because honestly to me, even though he's only supposed to be the Cryptarch, he's actually a very prominent character in the tower. And if you think about how much you care about Master Ives in the Reef or Tyra Khan in the Iron Temple, you don't really care all that much about them. They're not that interesting as characters. Whereas Master Hall's got so much of an interesting backstory. I mean, most of us from Vanilla remember him giving us blues out of our purple engrams and all the exotics we first got. So there's a lot of memories with Rahul. And I think if Bungie were to kill him off in that tower explosion, this new social space, the farm, would be a bit more empty and kind of lackluster of a cool Cryptarch character. We'd have some new one that nobody probably cares about. So I'm kind of hoping a good old Master Hall does make a return. It'll be so much more interesting to have him the one decoding our first ever Destiny 2 engrams. But let me know down below, would you love to see Rahul return in the farm or would you rather he die in the tower explosion? So next up, we want to take a look at the actual director screen and fill in the missing blanks of those empty spaces we can't see just yet. 
So this one right here above Earth is the only one that's hard to tell what exactly it is, where the Traveller used to be. Of course, clicking on this would take you to the tower, which is now gone. That's now the farm down the European dead zone. So I'm not sure what this node is going to be. Now, this one is pretty easy. You can see the hexagon. So it's obviously going to be the Crucible, the same as Destiny 1. So safe to say this is where the Crucible is going to be. This group of clusters, you can see this one looks like the featured activities. So the daily story and the weekly and nightfall strike, the daily and weekly crucible and whatever else is featured now in Destiny 2. So the same line of featured activities, but now they're a cluster and they've been moved up here instead. And now this one closest to the sun, this is the most interesting node. And I'm fairly sure this is that Cabal Death Star, the huge kind of weapons platform. They've got taking energy from our sun. And all this gameplay you're seeing right now takes place on it. Now we still aren't 100% sure what's going on here. Of course, we'll find out in the campaign story. Now I saw one post which will be linked down below from clearly a very smart person who came up with a lot of very good theories on what the Cabal are doing to our sun using physics as well. And why there's that huge explosion at the end of the trailer so from my understanding, to put it simply, the Cabal are using this giant weapons platform or ship to siphon energy from our sun to make a second smaller sun. And then when that sun gets big enough, the two suns are going to gravitate towards each other and collide, causing a huge, enormous explosion, basically big enough to wipe out anything in our solar system. All the planets will be gone, of course. And it sounds about right for the Cabal. I mean, they don't seem very smart, but they actually are very, very intelligent, especially the Scions as well. And they're known for messing with a lot of planets, blowing stars up and destroying planets that get in their way. So I'm sure we're going to find out exactly what they're doing in the story. But now the gist of it seems to be they're blowing up our sun. And that's why you can see two suns in all these skyboxes on Nessus. And also in this shot right here. It's also worth noting that Gary does want the Traveler's Light for himself. So it wouldn't really make sense for him to destroy Earth completely. Maybe we free the Traveler and then we get our light back and then he gets annoyed and says screw it and just wants to blow up the entire solar system. But in the trailer you do see this huge explosion which does look like they might have done it. Not sure if this is a flashback to a different sun or if it's a simulation of what might happen. But it seems like something definitely explodes and if they do it then something would get damaged. So who knows. Remember they tried to blow up the solar system in the Shield Brother Strike. That's what we stopped them doing when they tried to detonate the Dreadnought. But this is why the Cabal are definitely quite intimidating and also pretty interesting because they do stuff like this. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, a like rating would be much appreciated. Of course, subscribe so you don't miss out on my future Destiny 2 videos. And I'll see you guys in the next one.